hideous. You're going to see a view that's going to be breathtaking. But it's up on this mountain, of course, that Elijah showed up to meet the 450 prophets of Baal. Remember, they love to go to high places mm -hmm. for their pagan worship. So up here was not only you had 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the grove. And they were idol worshipers. And Baal worshipers were of the worst kind. They were offering the children. They would People would offer their children to Baal. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice them on altars down in Megiddo where we were just at. The evil King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel were absolutely completely destroying the nation of Israel with their idolatry and their bloodthirsty pagan worship. The spirit of Jezebel truly was upon Ahab. But whatever she said she wanted, he did. And uh, she was ruthless, but so was he. Now, at some point, Elijah got tired of it and began to cry out to God and told the Lord, he said, Lord, don't let it rain again until the children of Israel repent. And for three and a half years, it did not rain a drop in the land of Israel, the Holy Land. By that point, things were so bad and the, the, the drought was so horrible that Ahab turned to a prophet by the name of Obadiah. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Obadiah worked for King Ahab and Jezebel in the palace, though he was a righteous man. So remember this. In every wicked government, God will still put righteous people yeah. right there. Right. Daniel, remember him? Yeah. Yeah. In Babylon. That's right. Yeah. All right. God does this. So Obadiah is a prophet of the Lord, and he's hiding prophets, 50 in one cave, 50 in another cave, and yet he's running at night, food and water to him to keep these prophets alive. Why? Because Jezebel had ordered the execution of every prophet of God. So Elijah calls for a rain to stop, and it does. Jezebel is so angry, she puts a hit on Elijah. She sends out troops of people hunting for him he runs and dodges and hides all over mount carmel he's constantly hiding here we know the stories we can't get into them all about how the ravens fed him at the brook and the brook dried up so you might be praying for something to have a life-changing effect in somebody and it may cost you something to see their miracle you see what i'm saying elijah wanted the people to repent so bad so he's sitting now by a brook he has people hunting him down to kill him the ravens are feeding him. The brook dries up. God says, go into the enemy camp and you'll find a woman picking up sticks. Tell her to bake you a cake. He didn't send him to Israel for help because Israel is starving. And oh, by the way, Jezebel will have him killed. So he goes into the enemy camp and she then says, what, make you a cake? I only have just a little bit of meal left. I'm going to bake my last cake and feed myself and my son and we're going to die. He said, if you will bake me this cake, your meal will never run out, okay? And she believes this. What were you going to do? It's your last meal anyway. Go for it, right? So she, gives the, so she gives the prophet the meal. He sits down. I can see her son in the corner starving, Say, what are you doing feeding this preacher? But when they get done eating, he gets done eating, the meal never runs out. The oil never runs out. Matter of fact, legend is, this is extra scriptural, but legend is that all the people in the community start coming and dipping into the barrel, and the barrel never runs out. Wow. All right? An incredible miracle. But anyway, back to Elijah in Mount Carmel. After a while, uh, Ahab is so upset, he has to do something. He sends people uh, out to try to find water, something. They got to do something. Hey, whatever can find. The animals are going to die, and then we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. It's And even the king gets out and searches. He runs into who? Elijah. When he sees Elijah, he says, oh, look, here's the one that troubles Israel. And Elijah says, it's, I'm not the one troubling Israel. It's you, O king. And this day, remember, I have to understand, he'd already prophesied that this day he would see the king, remember? So anyway, they end up here with this great competition. And the prophets of Baal build their altars, and Elijah builds his altar of the 12 stones, representing 12 tribes of Israel. And I'll read a couple of verses. Here's what it says. First Kings chapter 18 the bible says uh, in verse 21 and elijah came unto all the people and said how long halt you between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him or baal they say it that way and the people answered him not a word and elijah begins to build the altars 
He tells the four and fifty prophets, you go first. They do their rituals and there's no fire comes from heaven. And ha at mid midday, Elijah begins to mock them and make fun of them in front of the people. This angers them. They cut themselves. They jump on top of the altars. He says, maybe your God's asleep or on the vacation at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is happening. Finally, at the evening time of the sacrifice, Elijah says, that's enough of the foolishness. And he puts the altar, he puts the sacrifice on the altar and begins to call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord answers him with fire from heaven right here on this mountain. And when the fire falls, the people begin to shout and realize that the Lord God of Elijah is the true and living God. Amen? Amen. And so I can imagine Jezebel looking out her window way over there where we were at, seeing the fire coming out of heaven and looking at Ahab saying, we got problems. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a great story. And of course, Elijah wins. And right here on this area is where Elijah did that. And this is the high point. So you have to understand that's where they would have certainly been up in this area. That's an A minus. Is that an A minus? That's pretty high. That's pretty good. Now, he'll take us to the A plus and show you right where Elijah looked out over the valley. All right? All right.